Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the top 20 books that I want to read in 2020. These are books that I kind of have not gotten to yet that have all been released before 2020 and I really want to make an effort to make sure that I get to them this year. And so I'm going to go in like no particular order, just go down my list in kind of the order that I thought about them. And to start off, we have Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I mean, this is a book that I've just heard nothing but amazing things about and I've had it on TBRs a few times and I just never got to it. Spencer's world has been under attack for decades and Spencer desperately wants to join with the flight academy so she can learn to become a pilot. However, her father was a disgraced pilot who was killed years ago when he abruptly abandoned his team. Flight school might be a long shot, but Spencer is determined to not give up. After an accidental discovery in a long forgotten cavern, she may have just what she needs to achieve what she wants in this life. I mean, I just know that Brandon Sanderson is an acclaimed writer and I'm really looking forward to reading some more sci-fi this year. The sequel for this one just came out as well. So I hope that I can get to this one in 2020. <laughs> the next book on this list is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. Melissa, my best friend, got me these books, this one in the sequel for my birthday. And so I feel like I really need to read them. <laughs> There's barely any magic in modern day New York. However, Esta is an acclaimed thief who specializes in magical objects. She's been raised to steal magical objects from the order which is a sinister organization that created the brink which traps all of those gifted with magic within the confines of manhattan with her innate ability to manipulate time she's the perfect thief to go back to 1902 and steal an ancient book which contains the secrets of the order i've heard this book does time travel really really well and i love stories set in like 1900s new york i think it's going to be a really really good book and i want to read it Next on my list is War Cross by Marie Lu, which this is just such a pretty book. Look at this blue with this white. I just love it so much. Um, and this is a duology. War Cross is a game that has taken over the world. Amika is a teenager struggling to make ends meet. And so she works as a bounty hunter to track down those who bet on the War Cross game illegally. To make some quick cash, Amika accidentally hacks into the world championships of Warcross and accidentally glitches herself into the game and becomes an overnight sensation. Amika is convinced that she's going to be arrested, but instead she gets a call from the game's creator asking her to become a spy on the inside to uncover a security problem. And thus our story takes place from there. I mean, I've never really read a book about video games and this one I just know is well loved and just a very very cool concept so i'm hoping to get to this one soon i picked this up with the intention of reading it like a year and a half ago still haven't gotten to it next up is ghost of the shadow market by cassandra clare sarah reese brennan maureen johnson kelly link and robin wasserman this is a short story collection following the silent brother brother zachariah as he is in the illicit shadow market where downworlders buy and sell magical objects and we have characters from the infernal devices and the dark artifices and the upcoming lost hours series and we get little snippets of their life and i know that this is pretty much essential to read before Chain of Gold comes out in March and so I really really want to get to this one soon so that I am prepared when the next Cassandra Clare book hits shelves. And on that note, the other book that I need to read in 2020 is Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu, which is the first book in The Eldest Curses. This follows Magnus and Alec. I think it takes place between books three and four of Mortal Instruments. I'm not entirely sure, but basically they go on vacation across Europe as boyfriends and when an old friend comes and informs Magnus that there is a cult on the rise that are bent on causing chaos around the world and that Magnus must do something about it because he accidentally created it himself years ago as a joke. And I love Magnus and Alec and I really think that Cassandra Clare has grown in the way that she's written their relationship throughout the different books. And so I'm kind of excited to get more of an inside look in their relationship during the time of the Mortal Instruments now that she has grown as a writer. And it's really exciting that she also added an Asian man as an author on this book since Magnus is Asian. It's really cool to see and yeah i mean just one of the things i admire about cassandra claire is that she has like said straight up that like they did not think that this book would do well and they didn't necessarily want to publish it and she took a pay raise to publish it because she felt that the story had to be told um and i just admire her for that 
and so I can't wait to support it by reading it. The next book that I want to read is actually like a YA classic and that is Grace Lang by Kristen Kishore. Katza has had the ability to, to kill a man with her bare hands since she was eight. She's a Grace Lang, one of the rare people gifted with extreme abilities. As the niece of the king, she should be able to live her life with extreme privilege. However, with her grace of killing, she is now the, the king's thug. She never expected to fall in love with beautiful Prince Poe or expects to learn the truth behind her grace, which may be more deadly than she expects. This one was published in 2008 and I've just heard it's just a really solid, really good YA fantasy, which as you know, I love. On that same line of thinking with classic YA, I do want to read The Thief by, by Megan Whalen Turner, which is a series that came out originally, I want to say in the 2008 time period as well. No, oh, 1996. Okay, so it came out in 1996 firstly and then there were four books and now there are new books in the series so i'm i want to get into it because i think it's just classic why i fancy um this follows jen who can steal anything which is a boast that he's made and it's landed him in prison <laughs> however he's invited to join a quest to steal an object straight out of legends and it that's like really all the summary that this book gives and it just says that the queen's thief which is the name of the series um is not our novels rich with political machinations and intrigue battles lost and won dangerous journeys divine intervention power passion revenge and deception um reagan from Prue's project really loves this book and she describes the series as almost like throne of glass-esque with the type of world that it has and political maneuverings which sign me up next on this list is the seven realms series which starts with the demon king by cinda williams china again a beloved fantasy series this series follows reformed thief hans who will do anything to make a living for his family one day han and his friends confront a wizard who is setting fire to a sacred mountain and he finds a dangerous amulet he learns that the amulet has an evil history and once belonged to a demon king meanwhile his story becomes intertwined with that of Princess Razia, who is the heir to the Fells and has her own battles to fight. She aspires to be like the legendary Queen Hanalia, who killed the Demon King and saved the kingdom, but her mother has other plans for her. Um, and again, this series is just well well known, well renowned. It also leads into the Shattered Realms series, which I would also like to get to, but of course I have to read the Seven Realms first. Next up on the list is Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie. Something about this book has just been grabbing my attention lately, and so I really would like to read it in 2020. Book takes place in New Reines, which is the so-called City of Sin, and I think it was like a fantasy-inspired version of Atlantic City. N. Salta was raised as a proper young lady, but she must leave her finishing school behind to follow her mother's trail to a city where no one survives uncorrupted. Her one lead is Levi, who is not the gentleman she expected, but a street lord and con man. Their search for clues leads them through glamorous casinos, illicit cabarets, and into the clutches of the ruthless Mafia Donna. Sounds like a good time. Next on my list is the Red Rising series by Pierce Brown, which again has made an appearance on a few of my TBRs that I haven't gotten to yet. We follow Darrow, who is a red, which is a society that is broken up into different colors and they live on Mars. The reds suffer in the mines where they think that they are making a living for the future of Mars. But when Darrow discovers that the rest of civilization has reached the surface centuries ago and that the reds are nothing more than slaves, he concocts a conspiracy to infiltrate the so-called golds. And again, this is another well-loved adult sci-fi series with a lot of books. Next up on my list is Crown of Feathers, which is a Phoenix Rider themed novel. We follow Veronica, who wants to become a Phoenix Rider, which are underground ever since the war between two sisters tore their kingdom apart 16 years ago. She escapes to join up with the Phoenix Riders and disguises herself as a boy in the process. However, when her sister, who she has a complicated relationship with, comes and finds her the Phoenix Riders and exposes her web of lies, things take a turn. I always love a good sisterly relationship novel. Next up is Caraval by Stephanie Garber, which is again another book that is well beloved on booktube that I have not gotten to yet. And in this one, we follow Scarlet. Yes, there is the Caravel every year, which is a game which you must be invited to. And Scarlet is excited to be invited to the game one year. However, she learns that the game is hunting for her sister who has been kidnapped. Next up is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, which is just the life story of a wizard, Kvothe? I couldn't tell you how to say his name. 
I don't quite know. All I know is that it's supposed to be a book with some of the most beautiful writing ever and it's fantasy. That's about all you need to sell me on this book. I know it is well loved and I haven't read yet so... 2020 will be the year. Next up on my list is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I absolutely adore Marissa Meyer and her Cinder series. So Renegades follows two warring factions, the Renegades and the Anarchists. Nova is an anarchist who infiltrates the Renegades and she's on a mission for vengeance. I mean, I love superheroes, I love books, so I'm pretty sure I'll love a superhero book. Next up on my list is Grave Mercies by Robin Lefevers. This is set in 15th century Brittany where Ismay escapes the brutality of an arranged marriage only to discover that she has been sired by the god of death and will be trained in his arts to become a deadly assassin. This is the first in his fair assassin series and I'm really intrigued by assassin stories and these recently got a cover redesign when a following duology set in this world was recently released. Next up, I don't know why I haven't read Children of Blood and Bone yet. This is just like a book that has been very talked about on booktube and I got it at BookCon in 2018. Still haven't read it. So in Children of Blood and Bone, we follow Zelly, a West African inspired fantasy where there are different clans of powers kind of described as Avatar, the Last Airbender-esque. When magic disappeared under the orders of a ruthless king, the lives of the magic wielders were changed forever. And now Zelly has one chance to bring back magic and strike against the monarchy with the help of a rogue princess. They must outrun the crown prince who is hellbent on eradicating magic forever. Next up is another book that I bought forever ago and still haven't gotten to and that is Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa and this is a kitsune book. The main character Yumiko is half kitsune half human and she has a lot of skill with illusion and she's forced to flee for her life with an powerful ancient scroll with the power to grant a wish. So all I know about this I know that my friends have loved this book and read it and I am really interested in learning more about Kitsune lore because it just seems cool, especially after reading about Gumiho's in Wicked Fox, which made my top books of 2019. So uh, I'm excited to give this one a read and there are there's another book in the series out and a third one coming out in 2020. Next up is kind of another classic YA book and that is Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pierce and this one is, again, like another book that got a follow-up series that got me wanting to read, and that follow-up series is Thou of Thieves, which just have beautiful covers. This is the first in the book in the Remnant Chronicles. So this is about Princess Olaya, who is set to an arranged marriage, which she does not want to partake in, and so she flees. And in her new life, two handsome strangers show up. One is the assassin sent to kill her, while the other is the jilted prince, and she does not know which is which. And, uh... That's about all you need to sell me. Next up is a book by one of my favorite authors. I don't know why I haven't read it yet. And that is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I absolutely adore Stranger Dreamer. Why haven't I read this yet? I don't know. But this follows, what's her name? Karu, who lives in the ordinary world, but has the ability to travel between different worlds. And this is actually connected to Strange the Dreamer in a way and has to do with angels. So yeah, I don't know too much about it. I always think that Lainey Taylor's books are a little bit better to go into not knowing much because part of the fun of her stories is kind of like discovering what happens along the way. And this is her first series. My best friend Melissa read this like back in the day when it first came out and she absolutely loved it. So, you know, I love Lainey Taylor. You don't need to do much to convince me to read her books. I actually need to get to these and last but certainly not least, we have The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, which is the first book in the Mistborn trilogy. I've been reading to read this book forever, and I actually did start it in the last few days of 2019, but I'm still putting it on this list because I did not finish it. <laughs> Mistborn is a story about a world in which the Dark Lord won and has been ruling for a thousand years. Ash has fallen from the sky for a thousand years. This is basically set in a world where there is magic based on ingesting certain metals and they give you special powers based on the type of metal that it is. But if you can master all metals and all magic, you are known as a Mistborn. And so the story is about the rebellion of the Ska, which are the peasant class rising up against the Dark Lord. Okay, that is my list. It definitely took me longer to talk about all these than I thought that it would. My throat hurts. I'm gonna go get a glass of water, but please let me know down below what book from this list you're looking forward to reading, or if not on this list, like what book you need to get to in 2020. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.